Hey everybody, today we're just going to be covering infinite unions and intersections. It's the last tool that I wanted to cover before we hit this exam, and um, I was going to cover it in our 5.3 lecture, which we're not going to be having, but this is a really important tool, so we'll briefly go over it. Big idea is basically we're going to take a lot, lot, lot of unions or in a lot, lot, lot of intersections, and um, it might be arbitrarily many, and so how do we deal with that? For example one, let's look at um, this first union. It helps, in my opinion, to go ahead and write out a few of these terms. So the very first um, interval we would have is we would come here, and just like we do with summations, you just plug in this n equals one, and then you would go all the way up to a big N. Except now, instead of having a plus sign in between each of our terms, we're going to have a union sign in between intervals. So for instance, that would be like negative 1 to 1, unioned with, and the next term would be n equals 2. So negative 2 to 2, unioned with negative 3 to 3. And then that would continue all the way up to the nth interval, so negative n to positive n, big n's. There we go. So then in order to do a union, remember that's um, going to include everything that is in all of our intervals. Notice that they were like getting larger and larger and larger. So we started with the interval negative 1 to 1, but Negative 1 to 1 is a subset of negative 2 to 2, which is a subset of negative 3 to 3. And I'm sure that you can understand that everything that's happening in here is going to be a subset of negative n to n. So let's point out this guy here is the smallest. And this guy here is the largest. Indeed, he contains all previous intervals. And so when we union all these um, intervals together, really we're just going to end up with this guy because we have everything from before. So like the union between just these, uh, just between these first two would just be negative two to two because this guy this smaller interval didn't really contribute anything. And so when we do the um, up to n, we really just need the largest interval because he's got everything everyone else has and a little bit more. So we say that negative n to n is going to be equal to our union over all the intervals like that. So what if, you know, summations can go out to infinity. They don't necessarily have to stop at some number. So what if our unions went out to infinity? What would happen? Well, then that would look like boop, boop, boop. this, except our unions are going to go forever. And they're going to, just like before, we're going to have the smallest one here we're going to have keep getting bigger. Um, and so we're going to use the idea of like a limit to figure out what this is going to translate to. So we've got the limit as n is going to go to infinity of like we want to figure out like what is happening to the right bound of our interval. That's just an n, so that's why I plugged that in here. I'm like, well, that just goes to infinity itself. So the limit of what's happening to our like interval behavior is going to look like negative infinity to infinity. And what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to put these square brackets on because we don't put square brackets on to infinities. And so it actually is going to turn into um, open brackets. So then we could say that our infinite union mm -hmm, 
is going to be equal, so our infinite union, boom, 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 is equal to negative infinity to positive infinity without square brackets, even though we started with square brackets. Or you could say all of R if you would like. Now let's do an example for intersections. So it's still working with the same interval. And we're going to write out a couple of intervals just to try and see the pattern a little bit. And just as before, I'm going to point out that this guy is the smallest. This guy is the largest. But now the opposite of what before, so union was like we want everything that is ever covered. Intersection only wants to know what do they these guys have in common. So again, it is still useful to notice that negative 1 to 1 is going to be a subset of negative 2 to 2, but for a completely different reason. That means negative 1 to 1 is included in here, and so their intersection is going to be the smallest interval because we don't care about all the new terms that are getting added in in all these additional intervals. We want to know what they all have in common, and that will be the smallest one. So let's go ahead and um, let's see, note that. Let's see. Contained in all bigger intervals. And so we could say that negative 1 to 1 is equal to this finite intersection with arbitrarily many intersections. Okay. And again, what if our intersection went out to infinity? What would that cause? Well, same thing as before. But now it's going to go forever. And it's going to keep getting bigger. But still, we only want to know what do they all have in common. Getting bigger is adding new elements, but we don't care about those elements because we only care about the fact that negative 1 to 1 is going to be contained in all the bigger intervals because that's what everybody is going to have in common. So he is still contained. So I'm going to copy down this as well. Still contained in all the bigger intervals. And so we can say that our negative 1 to 1 interval is going to be equal to our intersection that is infinite. There we go. All right, and really, that's basically all there is to it. But let's do one more example just for good measure. This time I'm going to do like 0 to 1 over n. So only one of our n's is moving this time, which makes it a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and write out a few terms. Yeah, let's do this. So both of these are going to be infinite unions of intersections. Up. Now what we have is our very first interval is the largest one. They're getting smaller and smaller. So largest, this one is going to be, keeps getting smaller. So when we think about unions, we want to know what is going to, um, what happens when we put all of them together. Let's see, 0 to 1 contains 0 to a half. 0 to a half contains 0 to 1 third. So everybody's a subset of 0 to 1. So 0 to 1 encompasses all the information. 0 to 1, we could write because 0 to 1 contains all 
the smaller intervals. And then when we think about the intersection, now we want to know what do these all have in common? So let's think about the end behavior. Now this whole, it keeps going and going and going, is really, really important. So zero to one contains zero to a half. And so if we intersected just these guys, we would only care about zero to a half. So if we're doing infinitely many, we really care about the smallest interval. We care about what's happening all the way out there at infinity. So let's figure out what's happening at infinity. So the limit as n goes to infinity, and then our endpoint is 1 over n, so let's figure out what's happening to our endpoint. That is going to be 0. So if we think about the interval as a whole, that is going to be like 0, 0, or we don't write this though. This is bad notation. So don't write this. What does this mean? So it means our interval starts at zero, but it ends at zero. So there's only one thing in the interval. And that thing is zero. So we switch over to set notation. This is the set containing just the element zero. So the intersection is just the, inter um, just the um, element zero. There we go. Notice I did not go into some fancy, like, set uh, like element chasing sort of arguments for these. Um, yes, you can prove that they are equal using set, um, using uh, element chasing arguments, but that's just really not necessary. It's not what I'm going for right now. Someday you'll probably have to do that later in your math career, but right now I'm just trying to um, meet with your intuition and that's all I'm looking for. So on an exam, you do not need to do any sort of interval uh, set chasing Ah, element chasing. <laughs> Don't need to do any element chasing arguments. You just need to be able to reason with me. Like, it contains all the smaller intervals. Therefore, the union is going to be this guy. I want, I want justification, but this is all the ju justification I need. Just a little bit of um, intuitive reasoning and limits from calculus. But anyway, that was the last of the material. That's all um, we're going to cover before the exam. So I will see you guys next time.